I was actually muted. Hey guys, Grandmaster Pascal Charbonneau here. I'm, I tried my best to uh, transition as quickly as possible uh, from uh, my um, better make a move uh, from my after show, and so I thank you all for tuning in. All right, I got to play knight d4. This is a three-minute game, so I can't just uh, can't just mess around too much, right? I got to um, got to move fast. Here we go. All right, he plays bishop e2, so he lets me take that bishop. I think Jan Gustafsson would say that if you see a bishop, you should take that bishop. Um, now, how am I going to develop? I'll play with d6 to start. My sound should be working now. If you don't hear me, do let me know. Uh, but I think my sound is there. At least it should be. I had muted myself when my daughter was, uh, was crying for a second there. So, all right. So we have a dragon position here where he's decided to let me take his, his light squared bishop. It's actually not bad for him. I think his position is quite okay. I'm going to keep my dragon bishop. I'm not going to let him trade that. Um, someone's asking if, if I want to play um, three minutes or uh, five minutes. That's um, I'm going to play probably mostly three minutes because we don't have a whole lot of time today. We have Sam. Uh, Sam coming in, you know, for the workshop in uh, not too much time. I got to watch for tricks here with like e5. I'll, uh, where should I? I want to move my queen, right? My queen seems to be in uh, in the way of stuff. Um, maybe he'll play. Okay, so he plays there. You know, sometimes in the dragon you want to sacrifice on c3, but I can't really do it here because uh, because uh, yeah, I just don't think there's enough. But my position is fine. It's, it's very solid. Maybe I should have played rook c4 with some ideas of taking on e4. I'll probably do that next time. Uncaring father <laughs> mutes uh, daughter's cries. Um, that's a bit of a harsh way to put it, I would say, because it is not that I am uncaring. In fact, there is a parent with my daughter right now. So uh, she is not, you know, being ignored. My daughter is one year old, by the way, for those, for all of you who are wondering. All right, I think I'll play queen c5. I got to kind of be careful not to let him play like knight d5 at the wrong time, you know, with uh, possible checks. Okay, so he goes here. I'll go queen c8. Um, trying to keep my queen out of harm's way. Uh, and now I think I can start considering... Uh, Maybe I'll play bishop e6. It's not it's not so easy for me to make progress, you know. Um, another idea might be to okay. So he plays e5. Interesting. So e5. Let's see. So I think I'll take it and play rook c7. Um, I don't really mind a few um, trades here. So because my you know I'll take with the rook if he if he takes this because uh, otherwise if I take with the knight he has knight d5. So I can I think this is a this is a very comfortable position now for black, but certainly white is uh, is still solid. So taking here, I'm I'm guessing he's gonna take, and I'll probably well if I take with the knight he has knight e4 coming to d6, so maybe I will take with the queen after all. Um, all right, now I'll play rook d8. If he wants to play bishop f6, I don't mind that. So okay, he plays here. I'll take with the rook so that I don't get pinned. Um, the only thing is he's played, you know, he's played very solidly, so it's it's hard for me. Sometimes it's hard as black to really get like uh, really get good winning chances, and so I mean, okay, so he wants to play this end game. Um, I don't mind because now his pawn structure is weak, um, and so I think now it's very very pleasant for me. In fact, he's I think he's just losing a pawn here, so now it's just going to be should just be a technically lost position, especially because his pawns are all kind of weak. Um, the question is what the, I think I'll play b5 to, to try to fix them on the light squares. Now I'd like to play knight to b2 c4. Um, so now that's going to hopefully win another pawn for me. I think it does. Um, and so things are getting a little bit, little bit worse uh, for him than they were. Uh, if he plays knight c5, I can chop that, play king f8. My king will, uh, my king will get into, into, um, the, the square, whatever you want to call it. Um, Maybe I'll play f6 first. Eh, no, I'll just play king e7 first, get there. Uh, get the king to c6. Once the king is on c6, this is a very stable position. I could push my pawn to a3. Um, and the rest should just be, uh, I guess I'll play f5, just uh, stop, well, it doesn't stop g5, but it makes it uh, less less effective. 
And so now it's just a matter of pushing my pawns. I can take with either pawn here. I guess I'll take with the e-pawn. Uh, and then I'll just push my pawn to a2. If he takes it, obviously, it's not going to be very good. Um, and now I guess I just got to um, change my shuffle my pieces around a little bit to uh, to win this position. Uh, I'll take here and play knight. Well, we'll see what he does. Knight d3. So now I'm taking all the pawns, or I'll just push. I'll just push to uh, to make a queen. All right. All right. So I'm off. Well, off to a win to start. Uh, even though I was talking a little bit at the beginning. So let's see who else we got here. Like I said, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play mostly three-minute games, and I'm gonna try to accept everything sort of as fast as possible. All right, here we go. And uh, again, I'm very excited, you know, to have Sam coming back for for a workshop in uh, just 50 minutes here. So it's one of my quicker session. I'm playing armchair GM. I don't know if that that usually means he's not actually a GM. I wish you good luck. All right, we'll play. Uh, we'll play knight c3. We'll play what they call. What do they call it in the the the, the uh, new London or something like that? There's a chessable course on this. Uh, it's just Lawrence Trent keeps talking about it in the broadcast. So, but I don't actually know it at all. Um, so c6. I know you know the idea is that on c5 you play some knight b5 stuff. Um, if he plays this way, I'm going to sacrifice a pawn. I don't know if that's the. Uh, I know in a lot of these positions you kind of get a hybrid of these gambits. This is probably not the best version actually because my bishop on f4 is not especially good, um, or at least like I may have wanted, to, I may have wanted it somewhere else. Uh, but it should be it should be playable. Um, I guess I'll play bishop to d3, especially since he he didn't um, get his uh, he didn't get his. Um, I can't speak today. He did not get uh, the. Um, the bishop, the, the light squared bishop out to f5. I said it. I said it. It took me a second. So uh, I'm playing queen f3. I, I guess it's. Pr I probably might as well castle kingside because castle queenside. I think it's just putting my king in the line of fire for no particular reason. I'll play rookie one. Um, I'll probably play queen h3 soon. Uh, and I think this is pretty dangerous for black. So all right. So I, I think I play queen h3. And then my idea might be to either play g4, g5, or just something like knight e4. Um, and this should be fairly dangerous. Well, it is dangerous. I, just, I don't know if it's going to win, but it is dangerous. Um, I also, you know, there's ideas of lifting the rook here. Or I could, I can also consider uh, bishop to g5 as a way to, um, to try to crash through. And that does seem pretty interesting. Because knight e4, actually knight e4 does look pretty strong. Um, there's ideas like knight g5, and then also if, if knight takes e4, bishop e4, actually he has f5 there maybe. Huh, I wonder if I should have done something different. Because maybe f5 kind of holds things for him. And I had ideas to play knight f7, that was sort of my point, but... Now that I'm looking at it, I'm not entirely sure if I was so happy with how I played this. All right, now this looks like it's going to be losing uh, in a few ways. Um, probably starting with knight d7 is the easiest because I'm attacking his bishop with two pieces now. So, um, and if he plays bishop f4, I have knight takes f6 followed. I'll take with the e knight so that um, I'm opening up um, the bishop on h7, so that's just made in two. So he's got, well, he's got a real issue here, so to speak, right? So, all right, so he goes knight to e4. Um, I probably just take on e4. Or I can take on d6 first. I'll take on d6 first. So the point is that that's, I'm going to be threatening h7, and I'm going to be, um, you know, so I can take on h7 if he takes my knight. He can try queen d4, king h1. I don't think it does anything really to help him, unless he has f5 again. Do I keep missing f5? I mean, this is ridiculous. 
I'm uh, I'm be, I'm falling prey to the same move time after time. Um, so he may have he may actually have f5. In which case, I mean, I I had so many good ways to play here. I thought this was like the simplest. Uh, turns out maybe it wasn't, but okay, maybe we'll we'll never know. Now I'm pretty confident that this is winning. Uh, I think the simplest. Well, I keep saying simplest, and it's not actually simple, but I think the simplest is bishop g6, um, threatening rook f7. He can't play rook e7 because of queen h8 mate. Uh, he can, you know, interpose taking on d4, king h1 again, but I think that doesn't work. So, uh, does someone know the winners of the fantasy contest? I believe that if you give me one second, uh, I think if you go to the results page, actually, it is there. Um, all right, so now most precise, I think, is rook f6, since the queen on d7 is, is, uh, is open. So I'm actually checking this out right now for you. To, I'll tell you. Um, I do believe I know who the winners are. So for round six, uh, the premium winner is uh, Kenix, K-E-N-I-X. And then the overall winner, so the premium and non-premium altogether, um, is... Um, is um I'm sorry world champion one two three four all right I'm gonna play Welverine who was challenging me from a long long time ago and uh, has been talking to me in the chat as well so I'll play him a game here all right oh I get white again I'll try this new London for the second time just because it worked so well knight c3 oh he doesn't let me because he plays uh He's playing the modern. So, all right. So we'll play with f4. I, in Blitz, I usually play with bishop e3 and f3. Uh, but in this game, we'll play this way. Um, so now, because he's played knight f6, this actually kind of transposes more into a, a pierce, what they call a pierce. Um, this line. So here. I thought this might be a little better for white, but I don't really remember. I'll play e5. Knight d5 and knight e4, and I don't remember um, if this is. I don't even know if this is theory. I'm not. I'm not threatening the pawn on c5 because he's got queen a5 check. Uh, but I just want to play um, castles and maybe a3 and c4. Um, I'll play a3 because I don't really want him to play um, knight um, b4 and take my bishop. And then I got to get my queen out of because there's tricks now with c4. I don't think they are too threatening just yet, but I got to get my queen to a, to a better square. Uh, I think I'll play to e1 so that it can come to h4. And I think I think this is a good position for white. I may just play uh, bishop d2, rook d1, bishop c1, or I can try to play with queen h4 and at some point try to go for f5 or something like that. But I'll probably just start by developing my pieces. Um, you know, this is what they tell you to do. All right, so he plays uh, this move, which I'm assuming I can take this pawn. I'll just take it and see what happens here. Um, so uh, the knight, I think, is okay because I can play queen f2. I also had the idea of playing b4, but I'll, I'll play queen f2 to, uh, to immediately uh, sidestep the pin. And this looks like a, a bad pawn to lose. Okay, so here... I'll start with bishop to e4. I'm trying to put pressure on this bishop on d7. Knight d7 didn't really do anything, right? Because he would just take... Ah, did I miss some kind of tactic here? I'm ass I was assuming that this would lose material. Um, but let's see. It looks suspicious, but... Um, so if I... I'm thinking I can take on b7. And then on knight f3... I can play queen f3. We'll try that. I mean, that looks... Oh, I can't play queen f3. What am I saying? Uh, the queen is obviously pinned. So on knight f3, I'll take on f3 with the bishop. And then we'll see. I mean, I, I actually sort of... Oh, does he have bishop d4? Wow. You might have had bishop d4 here. So now, I did not play this well at all. Um, this, I actually played this... One could call this ridiculous, the way I played it. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> completely ridiculous, in fact. I mean, I went from being completely uh, winning to now who knows what this position holds for me. I think I'll play king h1 because I, I'm eventually going to somehow lose material if I leave it there, right? Uh, now, I'm tempted to take this knight. I think, you know, this position is, he's just okay here, but hopefully uh, hopefully I can figure out a way to outplay him from here. Um, 
but this certainly was not was not um, very well played by me. All right, so he plays Bishop e5. Okay, um, so I think I'll go Queen to h4, defend the pawn in h2, and create at least the uh, at least the uh, idea of playing f6 with potential Queen f6. I also have ideas to maybe play rook f3 to h3 or just rook f3, rook a f1. Maybe actually my position is better now. Um, uh, the queen on h4, okay, so this is a probably a good move. He plays queen to c4. Um, it looks like a very reasonable move. I'll play queen h3. I think I want to keep the queens on. Now the question is whether he can try to um, play uh, d4 and get rid of his isolani. Uh, but I, I'm starting to like ideas with, so, okay, he goes queen there. Now I'll play bishop h6, seems like uh, the move that has to be played. Okay, so he's taking risks here. I don't know. So if I played um, if I played bishop g7 followed by f6, he's got um, rook g8, right, because he's put his, putting his king on h8. But if I play f6 first, I think that might be better for me. Because he can't take on h6, queen h6, because uh, then it will be unstoppable. So I think, you know, this is good for me. So, okay, so he's got to do this. Then, at the very least, I can take his rook. All right, and now, I guess I play b4. All my pawns are protected. And hopefully, um, hopefully his back rank is still weak, and I can exploit that. So, uh I'm tempted to just play queen f3 and try to trade queens. Okay, so he goes there. I'll play h3 to just get out of these mates. Uh, and then I'll probably play rook to d1. So I think this should just be now a technical a technical win. Uh, I guess I'll take with the rook. I just got to move a little bit fast. Okay, so queen c3, he hung his queen, so now I'll be okay. Um, all right, good game, Welverine. You did make it a, a, a tough fight for me. Uh, thanks for the game. All right, we have uh, someone a little bit lower rated here who's been challenging me for a long time, Torque, Torque Madita. My Spanish pronunciation is maybe not that great. So, here we go. All right, E4. I'll play D5. Um, I've seen, you know, I've seen all the cool kids play uh, the Scandinavian recently in Blitz. So, you know, I'm 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 trying to pretend that I'm part of the club. Uh, thanks for the game, Wolverine. You said you hate time trouble. I, yeah, there was definitely some time trouble there. Uh, what to do here? He played d3. I, I don't want to trade queens because that's uh, a little bit boring. I'll play c6. Um, so now this transposes into a Karo Khan uh, with d3. I'll play e5. So I'm just trying to get a um, sort of a normal uh, center here. A little bit of an unorthodox way to play the opening for white, but nothing, nothing bad yet. I guess I'll play bishop d6. He can maybe, I was wondering if he would go for bishop g5. Maybe I'll actually play g5 here, why not, right? Like, let's uh, make it fun. And, all right, so if I play knight h5, I guess he has knight, well, oh, actually, knight e5. Uh, knight e5 is okay for me. I can play knight g3, knight c6. Well, that's, not, that's nothing special. But what if I play h5 first? Uh, I'll play h5. So if he goes if he goes knight g5, I have h4. All right. So he's going here, and now I'll play h4, bishop h2, g4, and you know th I don't know if this is all correct. I'm just um, well, Vereen, Thank you. It is a pleasure playing with you also. And uh, as always, you know we appreciate we appreciate all of our uh, premium members who uh, tune in to. Uh, to make these shows fun with us, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoy uh, the games and the commentary. Um, all right, so now I'm taking his bishop because because I, I got a chance to open up the position. I think I'll play e4. I just I don't really care about this d pawn, and I'd rather keep the e file closed. Um, and so I've been assuming that this is going to be 
a very dangerous position for him. Um, I think it is. I, I still do think it is. Question is, I actually may want to take on F4 um, because it does, you know, help me open things up. Um, otherwise, you know, I would play something like Bishop F5. Eh, we'll take it. Pac-Man, right? Pac-Man taking pawns. I've said this a few times, you know. There was a the great, probably the the biggest, uh, the person who was best known for taking material, of course, is the legendary uh, Victor Korchnoi, who was known for, for, for being especially uh, greedy um, with material. So I'll play queen g5. Um, I guess I'll just play simply here. I'm, I'm, I'm playing like a turtle, very, very, very slowly. Um, so I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. All right, I think his knight, well, he's hanging a piece here in a few ways, right? Like, so I can take the bishop on g4, or I could take on h2 first, uh, and then take on g4. And I also could consider taking on d2. Um, so which way, which way to go? I guess I'll take on d2 just because it prevents... Uh, prevent any sort of sacrifices on uh, prevent any sacrifices on e4 of course now oh well after queen queen f2 is a blunder bishop e3 and now I'm I'm pinning his queen so this is a uh, now uh, certainly beyond repair so all right I guess I will take on c8 We'll uh we'll let him get out of the pin first. I um yeah another another uh another sort of surprising day in the candidates. I think uh you know the performance of uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi so far is is uh very impressive and and sort of uh you know for for I think for the most part people were not expecting him to uh to roll through the tournament at least right like some people thought he had chances. Um, but but he is he has really um, he has really um, you know he's he's gotten great positions out of the opening good preparation I mean really nothing but good things to say about his play so far in the first game he was out prepared but still found a way to win so he's just he's been he's played really well so um, so yeah impressive all right thank you Torque Matita Medita I should say. All right, let's see here. Let's go a uh, little bit higher rated here. Um, I got a challenge from. Let's see. I'm trying to pick uh, pick three minute games, and there's a there's quite a few five minute challenges because um, people tend to like five minutes for for banter. I think maybe there was all right. Chess Cadet here. That's one that's been there for a while and is a three minute game. Let's go for that one. All right, I'm playing Knight H3, just like Ali Reza. Let's see if Chess Cadet has analyzed this yet. So, Ali Reza played, I do believe he played g3 here. I'm not sure, actually. And now I think he played bishop g2. Ah, okay, so he plays c5, interesting. I don't know what my plan is here, or what Ali Reza's plan would be. So I'm gonna play for f4. Um, which is a way to give this move, to give a move purpose that may not have had. Uh, Mick Tal is asking, do I prefer three minutes? Today I do. In general, I think for, for just the ability to, to talk, um, five minutes is good. But because um, because I don't have much time today, because I, I'm around 3.50, I'm going to end this stream, um, I thought it would make sense to play, um, to play um, three minutes. So that is what is going on there. Okay, so now uh, let's see. How do I play this? Somebody help me. Well, the the opening has turned out okay. You know, I, I can say that. Um, the question is, what do I do in this position? And I'll just make a waiting move because I'm not sure what to do. Um, it's not really a waiting move. It's useful in some situations here. Okay, so he plays a6. So he wants to play b5, which makes sense. I guess I'll just play c4. I think this structure is quite okay for black. Um, I mean, it's okay for both, but I, I mean, I'm I'm doing fine given that I started with with uh, knight h3. Yeah, uh, someone says fou h3 or bishop h3. 
Uh, Bishop H3 is, is definitely possible to trade bishops, but I wasn't sure I wanted to yet, because if he's going to play f5, then I'd rather keep that bishop. Um, so, my knight on a3 is, is a little little uh, out in left field right now, so I'm going to bring it back. I may even bring it to f3 from e1. Probably not. Um, all right, so this, I'm kind of happy to get my knight to e4. And, okay, so here, bishop f4. So I think this is... This is going to be reasonable for me. I can try to play for uh, a3, b4 here. And I'm rather liking my position. It's nothing special yet, of course. But uh, I think it's a little, it might be a little bit better for white. I'll play queen to d2. Um, still eyeing b4 and also potentially bishop h6 at some point. All right, so he goes here. I'll play, that's fine. Uh, and now I'll play b4. It looks like I'm ready for it. All my... Uh, I'm happy to open up the position for the bishop pair. All right, so um, I gotta watch for some tricks, but I think the position is is uh, improving here. Ah, I can't take because he's got some uh, some checks, um, so I gotta be careful here. He's got a check, you know that um, check on g3. If I take on b7, he goes queen d2 and then knight g3 uh, check. So uh, that means I have to be careful. I think the simplest is to just move my rook so that it doesn't get um, attacked. And now he can try a move like knight to e3, in which case the reason I put my rook on b1, which is a bit of a silly square, um, is that I can just take on e3 twice and my rook is defended. So that's the idea. Um, so now I am threatening to take on b7 with some piece. Okay, so if he wants to play the end game, I think I'm happy with this end game up a pawn and with the bishop pair. Um, I think I can keep bishops here. Seems like the right thing to do. I'll play rook b6 to, to so that his knight um, is not stable. I may want. Um, I'll probably want to play. Okay, so he goes here now. I'll get to the seventh rank. If he goes knight e3, okay, so he's he's shuffling his knight around here. I'm not sure that that's best for him. Um, I don't know if he's going to get anywhere. Okay, so he goes bishop here. Maybe that was, maybe rook there was a little silly. Let's see. I really want to keep my rook here, so I'm, I'm just, we're, we're shuffling pieces around, but I'm, I'm going to eventually uh, make progress here, I believe. All right, so now I can play bishop g5. I'm pinning him. It's it's definitely not not a fun end game for him here. Play bishop e6. So now my idea is that I'm gonna try to get my rook to the uh, rook to the eighth rank and uh, checkmate him. He offered me a draw. I'm gonna say thank you, but no thank you for now. All right. So now I do believe I have him in a mating net. So here we go. Tough game. All right. So, uh, Lazarevsky. Lazarevsky just complimented my uh, tactical sense here. So that's how you get a game against me. You just give me a compliment and I start blushing and accept your challenge. Uh, thank you for the game, Chess Cadet. Thank you as always. All right, Knight F3, I'll play B5. Um, the idea is that it's a little bit more active than B6 and the bishop on B7 um, is good against a fianchetto bishop. Um, so knight of 3 b5 is a pretty reasonable move. Of course, in these banter blitzes, I try to uh, play fun openings and make everyone go, ah, you know, when they see a weird move. So that is the intent. I don't know if I do a good job of it, but I try. I'm also trying to interact. In banter blitz, I really try mostly to interact with uh, our chess 24 chat. Of course, I'm Happy to have followers everywhere on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, wherever, Facebook, wherever you may be. And I thank you all for being there. Um, but, of course, um, I only have one set of eyes, only one hand. That's not true. I have two hands. Um, but I do, I do try, anyway, I, I do try to interact as much as possible, basically. 
All right, so he goes f4. I got to defend that bishop. I guess I'll play queen to queen to b6 just to have some dreams of playing c4 check and win a piece somehow. It's kind of a dirty trick more than a more than anything real. So c4. So he prevents my dirty trick, um, but that's okay. I think it's a. Let's see. Maybe I think I'll play. I don't know which rook to move. It's often a big question, right? Which rook to bring to which square? You have, you know, d8, c8, b8, all these options. It's very difficult. Um, but I figured the d file might be open soon. And also I wanted to, I had ideas like knight e5 and knight g4 somewhere. And uh, But if I do that, maybe I would have wanted my rook on f8 in case the f file gets open. So. Hard to decide, and I don't know that I made the the, the best uh, choice. He is taking too long here. He's going to run out of time. All right, so he plays rook c1, plays it safe. At some point, I may um, simply play d4 because that kind of locks up his bishop. But I may want to first, I think this is the right way actually, b takes e4, he has to take with the d-pawn, and then I play d4, and so this gives me more uh, more pawns in the center. Um, so I think this is a, a very pleasant position for black. Now do I play knight to e4? I think I'll start with just a5, idea to play a4, a little bit unpleasant. And I just I just think his pawn structure is is kind of is kind of uh, not ideal here. So I'll just take with the knight. So I'm playing I'm trying to play positionally. I don't know. Maybe at some point he's got to try to free himself up with like e3. Um, this may be preparing that I don't know. My king is safe and I have a lot of time. All right, so he plays here. I'll take this pawn. And then I guess, I guess I'll play rook to b8. I don't know. All right, he goes back. And now I just thought that I was happy that his bishop has gone away from the big diagonal. Although he may have the idea to play, again, like I, I had said, to move e3. Now on e3, and on a lot of moves, I was planning to play queen e4. Um, but here he does have the idea of taking... Um, Taking on e4, playing knight c6 with a f with a fork. Uh, Sergei, Sergei Rachmaninov says hi. I say hi. Hi back. Um, he is a frequent a frequent uh, guest of our shows. If I play queen e4, he has these knight d7 tricks. But maybe here I can play rook to a3 since his bishop was guarding that square and no longer is. But, uh, you know, he's played a good game uh, for someone with a rating of 1,500 or so. He's, uh, you know, he's, he hasn't, he's kept everything together up to, uh, up to this position here. So, all right. So now this is a tricky move. He's, he's uh, it's a tricky move. And I may be able to take on B3 now. I mean, in fact, I think that's what I will do. But it would be, you know, the, the more sort of positional thing to do is to just take on F3. He plays rook takes and he's really passive there. You know, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go for that just because he's so passive. Um, I can, oh, so he decides to give the pawn that way. It's a good thing I didn't pre-move. Um, and now, which way to take or whether I should take. In fact, I'll just play h5 because I think that pawn is not going anywhere. So make Luft for the king. Uh, Serge, I've had a good day so far. Pretty busy, you know, with the candidates and and everything else. All right, so I have a challenge here from um, Vincent, Vincent with an S82 from the United Kingdom. So, um, yeah, good day so far. Pretty interesting day of chess. Two wins today, so that's always fun. I'll play E5, just like in the Jan Gustafsson video. It's E5, E5. Um, 
So I'll try to follow the Yan repertoire, although I haven't, don't tell him this, but I have not gone through the entire repertoire. So I don't know everything um, that he recommends. Uh, this position, I think we just play with bishop e7. At some point we'll play b5, but it's actually interesting to delay it a little bit, I think. So this way. So now, well, I think, you know, there's a, he can play with bishop b3 or bishop c2. So here he plays with bishop c2. Um, I don't really remember how any of this goes, frankly. So we'll just do our best. This is like a briar uh, variation. When the knight gets to g3, you normally want to uh, have played g6. My fantasy predictions have been, I would say, mediocre overall. Um, I have, um, today I was, I was actually in the top maybe uh, 10 or 15% in the daily contest. I think it was, I was in like 200 something out of however many, there were very many out of maybe 1800 or so. So fine, but you know, I haven't really come close to winning on any single day. Um, I guess I'll take with the deep pawn. You can also trade a pair of knights sometimes, but you know, obviously I'm trying to maintain, I'm trying to keep pieces on the board. I think now c5 makes sense. Um, hmm, hmm. <coughs> uh, today I think I had, I think I actually had Nepomniche winning, but I did not have uh, Gary winning. So I got some of it right and some of it not. Uh, all right, I think. I'll tr should I trade a pair of rooks first, or should I play queen b... So if I play queen b6... Eh, yeah, queen b6 is okay. And then I take on a8 with the bishop, because otherwise he's got bishop f6, knight f6, and I have to make sure all of my pawns are protected. So he's played well so far. I mean, I think this position is about equal. Um, he's played solidly. Now, I think I like to move c4 to uh, grab grab a little space. Uh, bishop b3, I can play bishop c5. But he's, you know, he's obviously, he's obviously okay here. Although I think his, his last few moves have been a little bit tame. And so sometimes, you know, that doesn't mean he's worse. He's not, I don't think he's worse yet. Now I'm tempted to play knight g4 just to kind of mix things up. Hmm. Yeah, we'll play knight g4 and just see. Uh, I have ideas with knight take, like for example, queen g5, knight f2 looks good for me if he, okay, so he goes here. And now my idea, my original idea was to play knight e6 to f4. So I'm just spending a second here to make sure. Yeah, I'll play knight e6. We'll, we'll uh, all right, so now I get my knight to f4. He moves queen somewhere. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not like it's over yet at all. He's still fine, I think. Knight f6. So now he can try a move like maybe queen d6. Yeah. Um, good move. I think I got a trade. Play king g7. Getting getting complicated now uh, because he he may have ways to win a pawn, but I think I think I'm gonna have a lot of counterplay. All right, so he just goes here. He's played quite well, I must say. Ah, so what do we do here? He's got rook b6 is coming. I don't have too much time either. I'm gonna play knight e6 to c5. I, I, you know what? I, I feel like I might be losing the thread a little bit here, so I'm just. I think this was one of the safer options for me. I'm not too sure. I'm threading the pawn on e4 a bunch of times, but, but this could easily sort of, uh, you know, uh, peter out into a draw, which will not be that exciting of a result for me. 
But actually, I got to make sure that I don't just lose a pawn. I'm going to move here. I'm in a little bit of trouble, I think. Although here, um, yeah, I don't know exactly what's going on. He's probably better. Well, now he fell for my trap. So this was my uh, this was my sneaky sneaky way to play. So somehow I won, but not not too impressive a game by me. So all right, I managed. Um, this next game may be my last game because I do have to um, host Sam Shanklin's stream after, which is starting at just um, four o'clock Eastern. 9 Central Europe, well, in just a few minutes, right, basically. All right, so now I'm playing a different opening, knight f3 with c4. I'll actually transpose to a d4, uh, and I'll play knight c3. You know, I'll play the queen's gambit with bishop g5 if I'm given the option. Thank you for the game, Vincent. You played really well, and I think at the end you were a little bit better, in fact. I'll play queen c2. Um, I like these sort of new ideas where you castle queenside. Um, you know, they're, they're uh, of course, quite ambitious. So e3. And on h6, I think I'll play h4 here. I don't know if it's correct on this move or not, but, you know. All right, so he goes knight h7, knight h7. I think I'll just retreat to f4 because the knight seems a little bit awkward there. All right, so knight d7, I'll castle, and then I'm probably ready to start pushing my g-pawn forward. All right, so he goes here. Do I start with knight e5 here? Probably. All right, knight takes. All right, so now I'm happy, I think, take with the pawn, and I'm gonna try to roll roll up g4. Uh, if he wants to take on g5, uh, I mean on h4, that's fine. Okay, so he goes f6. f6 is always always a dangerous move. Usually you take it and then play g5. He can't really take with the pawn because there's queen g6 check. So lines are going to get open here and it looks like with open lines it could be pretty dangerous. Alright, so now I'm playing g5, of course. All right, he takes on c3. I'm going to take with the queen to keep the pressure uh, on this diagonal. All right, so he plays he plays h5. Not I don't think that's the move that he really wanted to play. The question is what do I do now? So on on bishop e2, of course, he'll play g6. So I'm thinking that I may want to prevent that by just going bishop to d3. At least prevent it for one move. And develop a piece. Okay, so he plays b5, sort of uh, natural, but I don't know. I'll get my king out of there. I'm not sure that he's going to get much of an attack. Queen c6, um, you know, there was knight b6 there, so it didn't look all that impressive. All right, so he's just playing here. Now, He's got ideas to maybe play uh, d4. So I may just play, I think I'll just play rook to g1. At some point I want to play g6. Um, so here I'll go queen d4. This queen, look, queen looks okay. I have to make sure he doesn't have, you know, some e5 moves. He's actually sort of, his position has improved a bit from where it was. I thought it was pretty bad earlier. And now I think he might be close to okay. Um, I don't think I played too well, frankly. All right, I'll play g6, especially because one of one of the things is that I can play rook g5 and cover the e5 square, which seems like it's a it's a wise thing to do. All right, so I play rook g5, cover the e5 square, like I just said. Um, I guess I would like to take this h pawn. All right, so he goes here. That's a looks reasonable. I'll play bishop e5 since I since I can. All right, he wants to play an end game. The problem is that. The endgame actually is not really a saving grace here, especially, well, of course I have this move that wins the exchange. I don't know 
may have had other moves as well. But um, but I don't think the end game was necessarily too much better than the middle game. Now I'm happy if I can to trade the the pair of rooks. I'm quite sure. Um, and so how do I win this? Probably start with f4 to um, and you know I'll just get sort of his pawns on the light squares for so that they're locked in by his bishop, and then I'll start bringing my king, uh, ring my king up. Then I then at some point I'm going to have to figure out a plan. So the plan, what is my plan going to be? I think so. Of course I can play bishop e2. Just got to make sure that my uh, I'm going to start with rook e5. Okay, so he goes here. Now I'll play bishop e2 and I'll take an h5. King progress here, I would say. Okay, well, Franklin uh, workshop, which they have been amazing. He is a very, very strong player. 